Welcome everybody. Welcome in the Mozilla room, the place to be. In this room, I promise you that not only you'll discover a lot of extraordinary technologies, but also you'll feel the Mozilla spirit. Love, sense of share, because doing good is part of our code. So let's begin with a person you all know, Tristan Nito. He has been part of the Netscape adventure. He's a biker. In fact, he's a rock star in Europe. He is a man who knows how to speak to our hearts. But a rock star who does the dishes at the office. He is an adorable person who is known our principal Mozilla evangelist, a worldwide position, and you must follow his blog, Beyond the Code. So please welcome Tristan Ito for the introduction speech. This is the most embarrassing intro I've ever uh, witnessed or been victim of. Uh, thank you very much. No, no, I didn't write it, I promise. Um, now, now I, I want to introduce you. Uh, uh, you know, never buy a Macintosh, really. <laughs> never do that. I mean, they used to work in the past, but now they don't. So, for example, when you get on stage, and you plug a VGA adapter to project something, you gotta reboot. You know, something that Linux used to do 10 years ago, then they just introduced it in a new version. <laughs> I, I promise, I, I need to reboot, and I don't like it. So yes, this is me. Let me try to. Can you hear me well? Is that okay? Awesome. Can you see something? No. That's fantastic. Nice. Um, so uh, my my name is uh, Tristan Nito. I'm a I'm a French citizen. Maybe uh, you've seen me uh, here on this stage or uh, at ULB at FOSDEM in the past. I think that's the tent here. Let's <laughs> switch this uh, thing off. Okay. Um, so, yes, I think it's the. I, I came here 10 or 11 years ago uh, at FOSEM for the first time. Um, I'm still very happy to see such uh, familiar uh, faces. What I want to discuss uh, now is, is the importance of Firefox OS. Because, I mean, since last year, it's the, the new big thing that has changed many things within Mozilla. And I, I, I'm not sure who is a Mozillian here in this room. So uh, raise your hand if you do not consider yourself as a Mozillian here, like an active, active contributor. All right. No, no. Not, not an active contributor. Awesome. So, and, and, and for the active contributors, um, I hope it's going to be interesting too. Um, I, I, think, I think Firefox OS is it's a huge change and it's a huge opportunity. Uh, but change, most of the time, is not comfortable. It's not easy to change. Um, and so this is, I, I want to explain why Mozilla is, is investing so much uh, on Firefox OS. Uh, so if you're a Mozillian, I hope you, you better understand, you will better understand after this presentation why, why we invest so much. And if you're outside of Mozilla, if you're interested in Mozilla and not so much contributing, then you maybe I will I will entice you to uh, participate to the Mozilla project one way or another, um, and you will understand why why Mozilla matters more than ever today. So th th this week uh, I I had uh, someone you know uh, 
tweeted at me saying, hey, Tristan, have you seen that? There is that guy who published an article called The End of the Web Browser. Um, and it's, it's an uh, orange uh, business services blog. And uh, it's a guy in Amsterdam. And when I saw that, um, I, I, I wasn't sure what to think. On one hand, on, I thought, well, this is so laughable. The browser to disappear? Come on. Never. And on the other hand, I'm not so sure. Well, the browser is a technology. I mean, and all, every technology ends up disappearing, being replaced by something else. And the reason why I laughed is because I really didn't want to happen, this to happen. I, I thought, we can't let this uh, uh, happen. Because if the web browser disappears, that's pretty bad for many reasons. I, I've listed like basically three of them here. The generative nature of the web would disappear. The fact that it's so easy to write on the web, to publish on the web. You don't have to pay royalties. Um, you just you know, launch your text editor, you learn from view source, and you can start hacking. You learn, there is tons of documentation. Of course, there is developer.mozilla.org, which I encourage you to read and participate to, and contribute to. Um, it's, it's basically, you, it's easy. And it, I, I think the web as a medium is fantastic, because contrary to radio and, and TV and, and newspapers, it enables you to participate, to start your own little thing. And if, if your idea is good, and if you invest in it, maybe it's going to come something bigger. Maybe it's going to come, it's going to become the next Facebook or the next Wikipedia. You start with just your brain and a PC and open source software, and you can learn and you can invent, you can create. And if we lose the web, we lose this opportunity for citizens of the world to participate and create amazingly cool stuff. As a user, we would lose the customization of the experience, the fact that we can install add-ons that customizes this experience. We will lose Grease Monkey and its scripts. We would lose the user uh, style sheet. Uh, all the things that you can experience the web on your own terms. And we would lose the non-commercial part of the web. Uh, I, I, I will quote, and that, that's not usual, I will quote uh, an ad, which is the MasterCard app. And, and they say basically, for everything that you pay, you can use their credit card. And for the rest, which is priceless, which is what really matters, well, you, you have it. You don't need money for that. And I would argue that actually, the non-commercial part of the internet is extremely important. It is priceless in every uh, sense of the word. But the future is mobile. That this is the sales of internet connected device uh, shipments. The red part on the bottom is the PC. As you can see, it's mostly flat. And the blue part is smartphones. And the orange part is tablets. And this is, you know, as you can see, it's, uh, it's recent. Um, it's only one, one quarter uh, it's from one quarter ago, and, and it's going to get better and better, worse, worse, depends. Uh, but the PC, over time, will get marginalized. That's the way it is. The future of computing is mobile. And here is how people experience the internet. They don't use a web browser. They use applications. And maybe for a quick laugh uh, this morning, um, I found that this really resembles something else in the, in the food realm, which is this, <laughs> right? Let me do it again, right? Scary. It's, it's one of these things, you put a coin in it, and you get bad food out of it, you know? It's just like one euro, and you get chips wrapped. As opposed to the web, which is about you know really a recipe, how you make your own application, your own web page, you get ingredients, you create, you share. This is just not about it. It is it is about making, take, putting money in the machine and getting drunk. Not all applications are drink food, really, but you you have to use them the way they were sent to you. 
and they're, they're, they're sold to you by an app store. They don't have a lot of choice. That's, it's the way you have to use these mobile applications. So how the web can remain uh, relevant in a mobile world, and, and that's, that's the question. And actually, more precisely, how can Mozilla be relevant? How can we pursue our mission in a mobile world where actually people use applications for their computing needs? So there are three, three things we can do. First, make Firefox for desktop awesome, and we're working on it. The six, uh, you know, the rapid release schedule is working really well. Uh, we introduce new features, more speed, more security, better user experience every time. And we need to keep cranking on this. And Mozilla keeps investing there uh, in Firefox and in the platform. The second thing is to keep making Firefox for Android awesome. And it works. As you uh, may or may not really, uh, remember, we have introduced, was it uh, in early July last year, a uh, rewrite of Firefox for Android. And it's so much better. If you don't use it, if you have an Android phone and you don't use it, um, I, I suggest you install it. And if you like it, please give it a good review. Uh, give it five stars. Uh, we want to get as close as we can to get to, to five stars. And for now, uh, from what I see, we are, um, on, on the recent uh, reviews, we're past 4.5 stars per review, which is awesome. It is fantastic. It is a really good piece of software. Um, unfortunately, we carry um, the old ratings of the old version of Firefox, who uh, are not so great, and so which are not so good uh, when it comes to the to the average rating. But overall, the new ratings are, are really really good. So uh, it's it's important to be on mobile, and especially on Android, and have a good product there. But unfortunately, competing well, it's hard in general, and on mobile, it's even harder because basically you're competing with the owner of the platform. Um, on iOS, for example, we don't have a version of Firefox. And even Chrome on iOS is four times slower than Safari because they cannot use uh, the exact same version uh, of, of WebKit, the rendering engine. Basically, um, the just-in-time compilation for uh, first, uh, uh, from WebKit is disabled for Chrome. So, JavaScript execution, if you uh, if you run uh, SpiderMonkey, uh, the the benchmark, then uh, you'll see that it's four times slower on Chrome on iOS than it is on Safari. So even if you know Google really invests a lot of money in Chrome, but they cannot compete effectively with Safari because the owner of the platform, Apple, has decided that they would not be able to compete. That means for us, as a smaller player, it's even worse because we have less resources than Google, maybe you've heard. Um, and so, so it, it means that on the long term, so, so far we're, we're doing really well on Android, but who knows? I mean, those who've been in this business for a long time know that uh, there are sometimes secret APIs that the owner of the platform can use, and then the other players, the, the third parties like us, do not know about and cannot use. And it's, it's, a, it's a war that we cannot win. And then, <laughs> There is the fact that currently there are three platforms, three mobile platforms. All of them are proprietary, more or less. You could argue that Android is open. The fact is Android is completely controlled by Google. Um, in some cases, I think it was for uh, Honeycomb, uh, the, the source code was not even released. Um, so it's supposed to be open source and free software, and the fact is it's not so much. You, can't, you cannot. Uh, 
well, you, you need to sign a contract with Google uh, to get access, early access to the next release. You cannot contribute code easily and such like that. It is not open in the sense it's not uh, open to contributors. Uh, but Apple is like totally proprietary, and Microsoft is not doing any better. And by the way, Microsoft is not even winning at this game. They've been trying for a really long time, they've been investing a lot of money, and they're just a dot on the radar uh, for now. The, the massive, I mean, the market really is, is Android in, in Apple. And it's bad. Uh, it's bad. Yeah. Uh, it's bad because um, it's bad because as a as a as a consumer, if you switch platform, you have a super high cost of doing it. All the applications you have um, are uh, if you, if you decide to switch from one platform to the other, you will have to buy them again. And as a developer, it's pretty bad too, in the sense that if you want to write an application for uh, iOS, uh, you will use uh, the iOS APIs. And if you want to do that on Android, you have to switch to another language, which is Java, and then use uh, the Android, Android APIs. And then again, uh, with Microsoft. And so this is, this is, um, this is where um, I think HTML5 has something uh, to play there. It's, it's, for me, it's one open technology to bind them all. You know? it, is, it is the thing that you, if, if you write once an HTML5 application over time, as, as we're creating uh, um, web APIs that are standardized, then you will be able to use these APIs on all the platforms. On iOS, on Android, uh, on the Windows Phone, and other uh, platform, even on a desktop, uh, Linux, uh, Mac, and Windows. So the third way to uh, to succeed and compete and be efficient and fulfill and fulfill our mission on the mobile world is to make Firefox OS. And Firefox OS is an old open mobile platform. This is an old illustration we created. I like it because actually. Under, underneath, you see this is HTML code. This is basically, and it's called to, it's, it used to be called book to gecko or B2G, and you'll, you'll find this sometimes in presentations later today and tomorrow. Um, it, I think we should have called it book to web. It's a, it's, a, it's a smartphone that boots to the web. All the, the notion of native uh, application is application written in HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS. JavaScript is the new native. And there, on Firefox OS, everything is a web page. The home screen, uh, the incoming call screen, everything that you see on the, uh, on the smartphone powered by uh, Firefox OS is an HTML5 application. <coughs> Technologically speaking, uh, basically it's Linux, Gecko, the Mozilla rendering engine, and web applications. That's all. Three <coughs> layers. These applications can run locally because they're stored locally, or they can come from the web. Doesn't really matter. There is a marketplace because consumers want a marketplace. Uh, marketplace of good size, like market marketplaces, uh, enables you to uh, choose easily an application. So that's the discoverability. And the second good side of it is monetization. The only issue, or the biggest issue with existing marketplaces, especially with iOS, is that they are a monopoly. They control what you can run and install on the device you bought. And that's, that's a very serious issue. So with Firefox OS, we won't have this issue in the sense that everybody can publish an application on their own website and people will be able to install this application directly from the website without going through the marketplace. So this is it for me and uh, for Mozilla. The web is the platform, especially on mobile. The web is the mobile platform. So let's review how, how we're putting things into place. Uh, last July, we have announced uh, partners uh, on the chipset chip 
uh, side with Qualcomm on the hardware with a ZTE and TCL and carriers that came and talked to us saying they were very interested um, in uh, in working with us on the uh, on Firefox OS. It was uh, six months ago, almost uh, an eternity uh, uh, at the side at the scale of uh, Firefox OS. Um, on January 15, Firefox 1.0 was reached. So, feature-wise, it was reached. Uh, a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of work needs to be uh, remains to be done to finalize it uh, and be shipping. But basically, uh, it's feature complete as of now. Um, on January 23rd, the first uh, developer phones have been announced. Uh, Many few, uh, so very few people have seen it in real, uh, so uh, we hope to have them very soon. Uh, we, we hope to have them uh, ready to order uh, very soon. I suspect they will be uh, this month. Um, we also have done the uh, Firefox OS app days in 25 cities. Today, uh, the last one in Berlin is taking place. Uh, but it, it was it was crazy. This is this is the Paris one. Uh, just to give you an idea, we had 200 people who registered, and then we slowed down the, the registration because we were uh, fearing that there would not be enough space in the room. Um, 150 people showed up, um, and uh, 36 applications were created uh, during the day. And this this happened in in 25 countries around the world. So it, it is really a grassroots movement to create application in HTML5 and JavaScript for uh, Firefox OS phone. And the next step here is at the end of the month, uh, in February in Barcelona, will be held the Mobile World Congress. Um, it is a very important time for uh, for Mozilla because, well, I suspect we will be announcing cool stuff at, by then. Uh, so I, I, I can't say a little, lot more than that. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, we want to create a surprise. We want people get, get, to get excited at the end of the month because Barcelona is, a, is basically it's the, the biggest mobile event in the world. And we want to make sure to uh, put Firefox OS on the radar. Uh, so in the meantime, and after that, how, what can you do to help? Well, first step, stay in this room. Um, attend, uh, attend the talks about Mozilla and Firefox OS. Uh, get in touch with the Mozillians around, around you. You can't miss them. They have, uh, most of them, they have you know, uh, this uh, wonderful uh, Firefox uh, hoodie uh, and stickers everywhere. Uh, talk to them. Um, if you're a developer, uh, try to have a look at uh, HTML5 applications. There is a lot that can be done uh, with these. It's, uh, it's amazing what you can do, and we'll have demos later today. Um, you can contribute to Mozilla with the URL below. And of course, uh, head to uh, marketplace.firefox.com, where you have a link to the developer documentation on how to build uh, HTML5 uh, application. Um, I, I think, really, that Firefox, Firefox OS, or at least I'm hoping it is, uh, that it is the, the platform of the future. It is the open source and free software platform for mobile. Um, it's not a done deal. In front of us, we have Apple, we have Google, um, and it's not a lot of room for uh, open source and free software. So let's make sure Firefox OS uh, succeeds. And let's make sure that the guy who said it's the end of the web browser is totally wrong. Thank you.